Hey guys, today I want to talk about how you can uh, realign your pelvis and how you can reachieve or reestablish your lumbosacral lordosis. Now, most patients today actually have a flattened lumbar lordosis, and although it's common to say that we have too much arch in the back, that is absolute nonsense, okay? Because if we had too much arch in the back, then we would see anteriorly positioned or directed disc protrusions, and we don't see that, do we? We always, virtually always see them protruding backwards. We know that this is caused by flexion and then when we pull the pelvis in we will get that we will get that anterior shearing forces onto the lumbosacral discs. Hence the common pathology of posteriorly positioned disc herniations in the lumbosacral spine. Okay now I have spoken about this before so I will not go into length about that but we want to talk about how do we fix it. First of all the patient has to stop bracing their glutes, bracing their hamstrings, and bracing their stomach. The thing is that when the patient is tucking under, either by squeezing their glutes or the other structures that I mentioned, it will be almost impossible for them to reobtain that proper alignment. So what we want to do, okay, so you look at the pelvis, you look at the lumbosacral spine of the patient, lift up the shirt, you will see that they have a flattened uh, alignment of the low back in the pelvic region, not in the middle back because that doesn't really matter. We don't see so much pathology there. And you will see that the lumbosacral erectors are not engaged in posture, which they should be naturally. Okay, And you will see that they are somewhat either mild, ranging from mildly to severely clenching their abs, glutes or hamstrings. And the most common ones is glute and abs. So then what you want to do, you want to pull the client's pelvis back and up. So that you can see that that lumbosacral arch uh, re reappears. Now you want to palpate those lumbosacral erectors. Let me find this my spine here. So you want to, you will want to palpate around the L4 down to the L5 and S1 around there. Palpate the spinal extensors and feel that they are now mildly engaged in the patient's posture. So what now? <laughs> Well, here's the tricky part though, because this is not just an exercise, this is a permanent change. So now the patient has to stop holding their breath, stop clenching their abs, stop glutes, clenching their glutes and so on in posture and learn to use their low back muscles. Okay, this is why we see that the studies show atrophy of the low back muscles in these patients, because they are not using them. We have to start using them again, okay? It's all about our habits. So you pull the pelvis back and up, you feel that the lumbosacral erectors are active in their posture, stop bracing, stop bracing, okay? And they stay there forever, okay? They have to reintroduce this pattern into their life. They have to learn to bend like that, walk like that, run like that, train like that, and so on, okay? So it is not easy, but it's absolutely doable. Of course, it is important to clearly convince the patient that this is uh, the right way for them to do it, okay? And that can be tricky sometimes. So the best way to do it, do it on yourself first, then it will be easy to do it on your patients because you see that this really works. When we get pelvis back into proper position, the lumbosacral erectors will be active. As I said, we will have proper support in the lumbopelvic area. The discs will no longer have that continuous anterior shearing force. Quite uh, contrarily, they will have a nice circumferential loading which is very beneficial, okay? okay? And of course, it's no, it's no problem to bend down and put on your shoes, you know? The, the problem is that they live in that pelvic flexion, which is causing the continuous shearing and detrimental forces to the discs. And of course, it also disconnects the QL and so on, and you will want to deal with that also. Many patients who, with low back pain, they have severe tenderness, even pain when you squeeze into the QLs when you palpate the QL. And what do you want to do with that? Well, first you deal with the pelvic alignment, then you also strengthen the QLs. And the patient will be happy. Okay. So I hope this video was informative. I wish you all a good day. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me.